okay, from uh, within the ponderous, ponderous uh, vast vacancy of the blackness uh, of space, according to the factual empirical version, uh, we tried to make more tangible the paradoxy of the fact value distinction. Um, the simplest statement of that is that um, if the fact value distinction is a fact, then the values must also be facts. If it's a value, then the facts must be values. Um, so, what does that mean? Um, let's look at it first from the empirical sense. So, it's true that, um, by the way, we have this, um, in a sense, the ground of the fact value distinction goes back to antiquity because, of course, we have a distinction between empir the empirical and some other sphere, especially through problems such as the problem of the one and the many or uh, the things that change and the things that stay the same. Knowledge is supposed to stay the same. History is all the time uh, accidental and changing. Uh, so from within the factual sphere of history taken that way, as it's conceived uh, prior to uh, the chain of reasoning that we get in modernity with Hume, with uh, Kant, with, um, for those of us who uh, follow the teachings of Leo Strauss, with Nietzsche, with uh, Simmel, uh, and finally with the promulgator, uh, Max Weber. Um, supposing an analogy on a situation um, where a trait is chosen by the environment. So, for instance, um, we have the situation where somewhere in the Mediterranean, a lizard was, or a species of lizards were um, confined in uh, absolutely black uh, cave-in, a series of caves. Um, apparently, there's enough uh, small uh, bacteria or small bugs that could get in there somehow, maybe through the soil and moisture could trickle in there so that they live for many generations confined in there and um, their eyes became vestigial. They ceased to have eyes, they went blind. Um, selection for blindness by the environment. So supposing uh, the whole universe by analogy is treated as uh, the environment and then the sequence that I just gave um, concerning um, Hume's simple statement about um, I say something, um, somebody took the COVID vaccine, uh, a bunch of people took the COVID vaccine, uh, therefore, and nothing bad happened to them, uh, therefore the COVID vaccine is safe, uh, therefore everyone ought to take it. Something like that. He says you can't just, there's no way to secure the rising out of um, uh, the is things that have happened to the ought. Uh, Kant tries to raise this up to his um, autonomy, but he fails because he must have his categorical imperative, which is empirical and appears at a certain moment in history. Um, just as an aside, say we could also call that an absolute imperative and sort of link it to Hegel. Hegel says basically, okay, the categorical, this appearance of this um, mechanism, the so-called rational mechanism for deriving the imperative appeared historically, but instead let's just say uh, the historic history itself is a rational process, the rational is a real, and it led to um, these principles that, that, that have appeared at the time of the French Revolution and which still hold sway. Um, so then after Kant, of course Nietzsche challenging everything uh, at a radical level in this certain in very basic uh, questioning, such as the question that opened this, the supposed fact value uh, paradoxy. Um, Strauss says here, the simple questions, we somehow feel contempt for them, or um, I suppose another way to look at that is people don't know what to do with them. People are uh, either they think it's just nonsense or they find it uh, very boring because they don't know what to do there or how to move forward. If you see that you can, there is something you can think through there a little bit, then that gives you 
I think, um, encouragement to think through them more. Uh, then Simmel comes in and Simmel says, um, Kant is, uh, the rascal is um, proven wrong out of his own uh, rascally mouth because Kant is that there's no is, is is just a couple in the statement, and the ought has no better uh, standing in reality than does the is. Um, the ought is entirely discredited. It doesn't, uh, it, one can't prove that it exists. Um, so this sequence would apparently be a selection out of the environment of the universe, which would then make it a fact. Yes? It's a trait. It's a fact. Um, which also means um, we don't know how to take it. So supposing there were other universes and other creatures in other universes, and they just never were forced to go blind in the same way. It just has a, uh, the flavor of um, uh, a wild, uh, truculent um, wilderness, just as much as the lack of it, because we, where the person came in in the um, experiment seems to determine the fact of their, um, their rational holdings. Now I would add another um, difficulty which is that the concept of the universe is also something which we would have to say would have been selected from within the universe. I mean that there's a bounded uh, area, that it's um, all rolled into one, that it's, um, we can then think about it in terms of uh, the post-Aristotelian thinking, which um, collapses all distinctions regarding to whether something is random, whether something is um, by regularity. Uh, it just says there's kind of a block. It, it encourages the idea of the block universe concept where you have this feeling that nobody before modernity ever had that you could sort of say, treat everything hypothetically as something which physics could account for such that absolutely even the most minute detail and um, uh, a plenum of causality, as it were, but not causality, but just of uh, sequences of images in some uh, ordering that uh, sometimes are um, come in regularities as the original concept of um, the original concept of nature was just that there's some regularities, but most things are kind of um, by chance, by fate, random. Um, the seasons are kind of regular, for instance. But the idea that the physical laws cover everything, that everything could be understood as regularities, is the modern plenum of uh, physics. Um, and seen from within this kind of fact horizon, um, the question of how there can be anything other than facts becomes uh, almost unintelligible. Uh, okay, so I just wanted to suggest some difficulties on a fact value distinction in a very broad sense, but we went far beyond the more narrow sense where the, fa the scientific fact is a special kind of fact, but there's all different kinds of varieties of how this word fact is taken, and I suppose one could have a kind of Socratic discussion where we say, uh, here's this word fact, and uh, what's all the talk about with regard to facts? And then you could go back and see, for instance, that Socrates is already asking questions like, we have these two words for knowledge, epistemy and uh, sophos, and um, then Leo Strauss is saying um, rather dramatically, although this isn't what he actually holds, but that um, from the point of view of Das Mann, as it were, uh, uh, knowledge has been severed from wisdom uh, eternally.